Three years ago, I bought Mario Kart Super Circuit at the Wii U eShop just to complete my entire Mario Kart collection. <coughs> and my first impressions playing the game, I hated it. It was exactly just Super Mario Kart but on a handheld, and it didn't exactly age well either. Needless to say, I quickly dropped the game after not having any fun with it for a while. Years later, I decided to make a Mario Kart video, and I needed footage from the GBA game without having to resort to, you know, looking it up and stealing footage. So I tried. And it was miserable still. But then something miraculous happened. I wanted to play more of it. So I did. And now? It's not my favorite Mario Kart game, but it's definitely a game I regretted hating. This was mostly due to me not grasping the controls really well as it was an early Mario Kart game and to share some formula with Super Mario Kart. But thanks to the improved controls, this game has now become a somewhat of a guilty pleasure of mine. And to that I say, I'd like to apologize to Mario Kart Super Circuit for talking shit about it. So to make up for it, I decided to rank every single cup in Mario Kart Super Circuit. Now you may be scratching your head if you're not too familiar with the game, but there's only like 5 cups in the game, how is this going to be interesting? Well, contraire mon frere, did you know that Mario Kart Super Circuit has another additional 5 cups? Yep, we're going to rank all 10 cups in Mario Kart Super Circuit from worst to best. There aren't actually any rules other than all of these being subjective, although if there's one thing that I'll say, I'll at least make some comparisons from the GBA and Super Nintendo tracks to what would happen later on, or even the originals at some point. So with that said, let's get started with the ranking. At number 10, we have the Extra Lightning Cup. Taking this list from the start, I immediately knew that this one would be in last place, but I need to explain why I think the Extra Lightning Cup is just terrible. It starts off as a very okay course, being Bowser Castle 2. Now, generally speaking, the Super Nintendo Bowser Castle courses actually kind of suffered in the transition to the GBA, mostly because they're all too similar to the GBA Bowser Castle tracks, so it might just look really confusing. That being said, however, the music itself is practically okay, which you're not going to see a lot of compliments for, so uh, admire it for all you can, Super Mario Kart. But the course itself is generally okay. It's not terrible, but it's not exactly great either. I find it funny that there's a troll path on this one specifically, so you know, that's funny. Still though, the fact that all of the background is being reused for the Super Nintendo tracks just kind of loses the identity that most of these courses do have. However, immediately after Bowser Castle 2 is Mario Circuit 3, which is the second worst Mario Circuit course other than the first one. And that's just because the sharp turns just kind of make it difficult for a handheld game that has mode 7 in it, which is also the same issue that it had in Super Mario Kart, so there's not much of a contest there to begin with. With the pipes removed, it's slightly tolerable, but it's not exactly interesting. And also the washout colors make it look really ugly. However, next up after that is Koopa Beach 1, which is a better Super Mario Kart track. Now, honestly, it's a bit too easy, but sometimes that's not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, it's the most relaxing course in Super Mario Kart, so I appreciate it for all it's worth. It's my personal favorite in this cup, but immediately after that is the worst course in Super Mario Kart. And not even just that, one of the worst courses in Mario Kart history, Chaco Island 2. Now, I don't know what it is, but about three of the four games that this course has appeared in, it's always been terrible. In Super Mario Kart, combined with the data controls, it's awful. In Mario Kart DS, it's one of the worst retro tracks. In this game, it's somehow slightly better than Super Mario Kart, but it's still not any better. My gripe with this course is a lot of factors. Firstly, for some reason, a desert track, a desert track, has some weird wonky ice physics that I can't seem to wrap my head around. So that's just generally confusing. Secondly, this this piece is just kind of awful. It's a thin layer and it doesn't work well. The mud is unbearable. Everything about this track, the brand, the brand, the bumps. This course is just genuinely awful and it brings this entire cup down hard. Come out with Mario Circuit 3, but that course is at least tolerable than this mess. In general, the extra lightning cup is the worst in the entire game, mostly because of the courses presented. At number 9, we have the Extra Star Cup. Now, in all honesty, this one might just be as bad as the Lightning Cup, but since the Super Mario Kart courses are determined in such a way where all of these are lined up like this, the courses ended up being okay at most, but worse at, well, worse. 
It kind of starts off with a bit of an odd introduction with Vanilla Lake 1. Now if I had to be honest, Vanilla Lake 1 might be my personal favorite Super Mario Kart track, and that's a bit of a hot take to say, but it's honestly because it just feels oddly relaxing to me. I have no idea why, it just feels that way. But unfortunately, this course shares a lot of the similarities it has with Snowland in the fact that the entire area shakes and it is disorienting and it hurts my head, but we'll get into that with Snowland. For now though, the course is kind of just simple and not much else really. The course after is Bowser Castle 3, and on Super Mario Kart, it was one of my least favorite courses in the entire game for a couple of reasons. However, in this game, it's a lot more tolerable, so I don't necessarily hate it in this one, but it's not the greatest either. It's, it kind of just feels too easy, especially with the fact that the swamps are just somehow gone, which doesn't make sense, but okay, whatever works, I suppose. The next course is Mario Circuit 4, which is personally a course that I feel like has a lot of missed potential due to how it was structured. It feels like it's supposed to be all of the Mario Circuit tricks combined, but it really isn't. It just feels like an extension of Mario Circuit 3, and it doesn't really engage me in any sort of way. It's not terrible, but it's not something I like either. The course does end off with one of the hardest Super Mario Kart tracks though, that being Donut Plains 3. And honestly, I hated Donut Plains 3 just because of, again, say it with me, dated controls. However, in this game, uh, there's a ramp there, so it's a lot more nicer than what <laughs> what this game did. What the fuck? It asks you to do this. This is actually how you're supposed to play through the course. Regardless of that, however, this course is just generally not really interesting and not much to talk about, but it is kind of a struggle to really play on. Overall, the Extra Star Cup is a lot better in some case compared to the Lightning Cup, but they're both just as bad, so I can't say anything about it. At number 3, we have the Extra Special Cup. Now, if you're going to notice a pattern with these, obviously the Super Mario Kart tracks are going to be much lower than the actual Mario Kart Super Circuit tracks. That's just because of the nature that Super Mario Kart is, where it is being the course teams aren't exactly the most interesting, as well as them being downgrades of their actual selves, so expect that. But as for the Special Cup, it's actually the most weirdly consistent. It mostly contains some of the remaining Special Cup tracks from Super Mario Kart, so there's that. It does start off pretty strong though with Koopa Beach 2, which is the better version of Koopa Beach and it's honestly a lot more interesting with the deep blue holes, as well as Ghost Valley 3, although I find that one to be a little bit more awkward due to how it was placed in Super Circuit specifically, but it's not a whole bad, it's still okay. Vanilla Lake 2 is just as easy, if not even easier than it was in Super Circuit, I mean in Super Mario Kart, so you know there's that going for it. And then there's Rainbow Road. And honestly speaking, this is probably one of the worst iterations of Super Nintendo's Rainbow Road, mostly due to the fact it removes the Super Swamps, which makes this course a lot more easier than it needed to be. But even with the Super Swamps, it would still be a lot more easier, so I can't really complain there. Overall, it's just a consistent track that's not terrible, but it's not really great either. Surprisingly though, at number 7, we have the Extra Mushroom Cup. Yes, the Mushroom Cup. This one ranked higher than the later cups. You see though, the entirety of that is the earlier portion of Super Mario Kart tracks, so they're generally a lot more on the uninteresting side, but that actually works in the favor of Super Circuit though. So let me elaborate. It does start off with Mario Circuit 1, which is a fine beginner track, but it's not exactly the most exciting thing in the world. It's still easy and generally uninteresting. The next course isn't much better, that being Donut Plains 1. Though if I want to be honest here, I actually like Donut Plains 1. I don't know what it is, but the course always just feels comforting to me. I guess it's because I always associate it with the appearance of Mario Kart DS, and for some reason that gives me a lot of good memories. However, the best course of the Mushroom Cup is Ghost Valley 1, which is probably the better version of Ghost Valley, as even though I like Ghost Valley 2 personally, the entire layout of Ghost Valley 1 does feel a lot more consistent and a bit interesting, although it does end up with Bowser Castle 1, which isn't bad, but it's generally a lot more boring with just five lines. Like, this is literally it. Overall though, it's a pretty decent selection, but considering that it's the early Super Mario Kart tracks, I'm not surprised it's not exactly as exciting, but you know, considering that the rest of these are just either filled with bad tracks or at least mediocre ones, this is clearly the better of the few. At number 6, we have the Extra Flower Cup, which would be the best extra cup in the entire game. Now again, due to the way that the Super Mario Kart tracks are aligned, this actually works in the Flower Cup's favor, as it now contains some of the best courses. Objectively, let's just say that objectively, okay? 
It starts off strong with Mario Circuit 2, which in my opinion is actually the best Mario Circuit variant due to it being the only course to have a giant jump, which is a lot more interesting in Super Mario Kart standards, so obviously it's a lot more better in this game as well. Chuckle Island 1 is the lesser of two evils of Chuckle Island, but that's mostly because the layout in there is actually somewhat solid and it's not infuriating, so I can give her props there. And while I do prefer Ghost Valley 1 over Ghost Valley 2, I will say that Ghost Valley 2 is still a pretty solid track. It's just that for some reason as I played through this course, I noticed that they removed this boost panel from near the end, which doesn't make sense, but whatever, it's not that big of a deal. It does end up on a pretty underwhelming note with Donut Plains 2, and as I played through that track, I realized just how much I kind of like this track. However, it does remove the Monty Moles, which does remove a significant portion of the challenge, so that does bring it down a bit. Overall, it is the best extra cup in the game, but it's not exactly the best cup due to it being, well, full of Super Mario Kart tracks, so you know, there's that. Starting off with the number 5 spot, we have the Star Cup. Now, honestly speaking, Star Cups are usually generally the best parts of a Mario Kart. They're always the most exciting cups to really look forward to, because they always contain some of the better courses in the entire game. This time, that's not the case. In fact, the Star Cup in Mario Kart Super Circuit is the worst in the entire game. To start off, it already begins with one of the worst courses in the entire game, Snowland. Oh my god, Snowland is infuriating to drive. Firstly, as I elaborated in Vanilla Lake 1, the entire course has a shaking camera. I don't know why the ground has to be this way, but it is disorienting and it actually hurts my head. I'm not kidding, that actually does hurt my head, even while looking through the footage. Beyond that though, the slippery nature with, combined with the data controls just makes it harder to really grasp. I'm honestly surprised they actually made this course work in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, but I'm not too surprised considering that it's on modern hardware so it's expected to be a bit better than the original. But even still, the only saving grace it has is the music, which is pretty good. I always associate it with this funny video where Spy just kind of loses his driver's license. Don't ask me how I know it is, it was a really funny video, okay? The next course after that, however, is the best course, one of the best anyway, Rim and Road. Now, Rim and Road is such a wacky concept that I actually find it enjoyable, although if I want to be honest, I don't really like the background too much. It just feels like you're in a nonsensical world and it makes me feel like you're in a My Little Pony episode of all things. Which is why I generally prefer the way it looks in Mario Kart 8, even though it doesn't have a fitting music and, well, some of the layout is cut off, but it makes sense in this context. That, however, after that is one of my least favorite courses, again, Yoshi Desert. Honestly speaking though, Yoshi Desert would have been my favorite. I wanted to like Yoshi Desert, but the course itself just feels really rough. Like, there's so many sharp turns that it's honestly hard to enjoy this course without either getting to the quicksand or just going off-road one too many times. It's also the most bland looking desert track for some reason, and that's surprising, and it doesn't really make me think about Yoshi at all, aside from the Yoshi Sphinx. Honestly, it's the most disappointing track to me, mostly because I really wanted to like it so much. It does end up, however, on a good note with GBA Bowser Castle 3, which is the best Bowser Castle variant. What is with these courses having the best of best and the worst of worst? I don't get it. Bowser Castle 3 has always been the most interesting course in my opinion, so obviously this one is a lot more engaging with all of the jumping ramps and the, that, and the outside background with Kamek this time, which has the edge over the remake version, so there's that. However, honestly speaking, the Star Cub is just underwhelming in general with two bad courses, one solid track, and the other one that I do like, I just don't like the background of it too much. Overall, a pretty okay course in the grand scheme of the list, but it's honestly the worst one in the entire Nitro Cup. Uh, can I call it Nitro Cup? I, I guess I could, but that doesn't feel right. At number 4, we have the Mushroom Cup. Now, the Mushroom Cup itself does contain some of the more, you know, basic courses in the entire game, but honestly speaking, unlike most of the marker games that have Mushroom Cup courses be as generic as possible, with the exception of probably Wii, this game actually has the most diverse selection. It does start off with Peach Circuit, which in my opinion is the most forgettable circuit track. Well, it's not forgettable to the point where you actually forget it exists, but it's stuck in a weird limbo state. That said, it does a good job being an introduction course, so I can't be too angry at it. However, after that is one of the more interesting courses, Shy Guy Beach. 
Now, Shy Guy Beach itself is a pretty okay track in all things considered. Like, I'm not too big on it, but you know, it's not a bad track by any means. Although, just one thing that I noticed is that the cannonballs not exploding did throw me off a bit. Which is why I had a better change in Wii, although the graphics in there just look really off. I don't know what it is, it just looks too blurry. Then we have Riverside Park, which is the most interesting course when it comes to Super Circuit courses. Like, it doesn't look like a park at all, you're just in a general jungle area. And that's why it makes it a little bit more interesting. I kind of want to see this remade, but at the same time there's, like other, there's another course that's a lot more better than it in some sense. But we'll get there, we'll get there. However, we end things up on a rather underwhelming note, that being Bowser Castle 1. This course is really short. It's a really short course for a Bowser Castle track. Hell, even Super Nintendo's Bowser Castle 1 is longer than this, and that one has 5 laps! Not to mention, it's so short the music can't even loop itself without it being under 150, and I find that honestly a lot more funnier, but honestly that's not really saying much, it's the most boring Bowser Castle course in all of Mario Kart. Overall, the Mushroom Cup is a bit solid, but it's not exactly one I'll come back to anytime soon. At number 3, we have the Flower Cup. The Flower Cup is the most consistent cup in the game, so it's not surprising that it lands itself a bit higher than usual, but I still need to explain why it's number 3. For starters, it does start off with Mario's Circuit, and honestly, it's a bit disorienting to play. I mean, you can't blame me, especially since Mario's Circuit has received one of the best changes in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. It just feels wrong to play the original and just not seeing the U-turn being angled differently. Still though, it's a pretty okay track, I'd honestly say it's a lot more better than Peach Circuit due to how much more interesting it gets, but that's not exactly saying much. And I can't say much for the next course either, Boo Lake. Firstly, for some reason I keep calling it Boo House, and honestly that is a bit more appropriate than it. And secondly, this is just really a wannabe ghost valley, so it just doesn't really help its case too much. It's not exactly the most interesting ghost area in Mario Kart history, but I don't really hate it too much. However, up next is Cheeseland, which is a bit of a weird course for me to really discuss because I don't like Cheeseland in Mario Kart 8 due to how, how often I go to the off-road. However, in Mario Kart Super Circuit, this course is actually a lot more interesting because not only does it sit on a nighttime scale which gives off the illusion of the whole cheese moon thing, but also it has Mausers, or little mice people, I don't know what they're called. But this is the only game where they appear in, which is a gripe I have with its remake in Mario Kart 8 because instead of them, we have Chain Chomps. Could they get rid of the mice? Probably. But of course, the cup ends up on a pretty underwhelming note, this time not exactly as bad as before. Bowser Castle 2 is the most interesting one compared to 1, but it's not exactly saying much either considering it's still a little bit basic. But I'll give it props for the amount of jump section it does have. I honestly find it a lot more dribble than Bowser Castle 3 for the Super Nintendo. But honestly, compared to the rest of the Bowser Castle tracks, it's probably the third worst. Or it's probably third place in the general scale of GBA Bowser Castle tracks. Overall, the Flower Cup just kind of lands itself in the same position as the extra special cup. It's not exactly bad, but it's not really great either. It does have the edge of having Cheese Land though, so here's a good point. Now, consider this a hot topic if you will, or probably not, I'm not sure, but number two is going to be Special Cup. Now, it's surprising to me that the Special Cup lands itself on second, but I have a few reasons why. It starts off with Lakeside Park, which is the most conceptually interesting part about the course selection in Mario Kart Super Circuit, primarily because this course actually has a gimmick that I don't think I've seen other than Grumble Volcano, that being a volcano erupts that shoots out. I'm pretty sure they have a name, I'm just being really stupid. But it's the most interesting part, and the course does actually change around lap 2, so it's a lot more interesting in that department as well. That being said, while I do like the concept of the entire course, in execution, I find the layout to be a little more frustrating than it needed to be. Especially because about two sections of it has this ramp that literally places you in dead last. Which is such a funny troll move, sure, but I don't really like it because it feels a lot more punishing than it needed to be. Mark my words, if this was remade in Mario Kart 8, then they would definitely remove that part because, well, given the nature of Mario Kart 8, obviously it's going to be a lot more easier than it would otherwise. But now that I've played through it a couple of times, I, can't, I can safely say that I don't really hate this course as much. Yeah, believe it or not, I used to hate this course, but after playing through it a couple of times, 
I don't really hate it anymore, but I don't really like it either. It just lands itself on the middle, personally. However, after that is actually my favorite Mario Kart Super Circuit track, other than what we're going to be saying, that being Broken Pier. Broken Pier is obviously the most interesting ghost course in Super Circuit, mostly because the concept itself is really ominous. You're just kind of stuck in the void, surrounded by creepy mountains, and the jagged nature of the course just feels really good. Honestly speaking though, on par with Vanilla Lake 2, it's a little bit easier, but it does have some interesting chart cuts and it's not like a glorified circle like 1 or 2 is, so I can't really say they're the exact same. Still though, it's one of my favorite courses and I do hold it dearly. The next course is actually even better. Bowser Castle 4 is always the most interesting GBA Bowser Castle course in the entirety of the game because not only is it the longest Bowser Castle track, but it also has Mega Koopas to accompany it, as well as seemingly combining all the elements of the previous Bowser Castle courses, which I do commend for. So it's a lot more interesting than Mario Circuit 4 though, so there's props for that. But Bowser Castle 4 does start the tradition of the Bowser Castle courses being the penultimate course before Rainbow Road, because the next course is Rainbow Road. Honestly though, I'm a bit mixed on this one. For one, I hear a lot of people say that this is one of the hardest Rainbow Road courses in the entire Mario Kart series, and I can honestly see that. The entire course is filled with ramps on the sides, and it does provide with some really risky shortcuts that you can take, but if you mess up, you're going to fall down. And you know what? I like and hate it for it. It's so exciting to really just pull it off well, but if you mess up, you could very well just lose the race entirely. But I will say that the entire atmosphere of this course is very unique. For one, the background is the most beautiful I've seen in any GBA game ever. Well, I mean, apart from Kirby, but that's to be expected. However, alongside that, it has a Paper Mario reference. Imagine Nintendo referencing Paper Mario, even in modern times, by the way. So, you know, it's amazing to see Bowser's Castle just floating down in the background. Obviously, if it was remade in Mario Kart, then this would be removed because Nintendo hates Paper Mario in the previous day, in the olden day. You get what I mean. Uh, but still though, this is the most interesting Rainbow Road. However, that being said, I don't exactly find it to be my favorite personally, but I do commend it for being the most craziest and hardest course in the entirety of Rainbow Roads. So overall, the Special Cup is pretty solid with only one stinker. Well, I mean, Lakeside Park isn't really a bad course or anything, I just don't really like it as much as I thought I would. Predictably, number one has to go to the Lightning Cup. It's kind of funny, in a sense that we started the list with one of the worst courses being the Extra Lightning Cup, we ended this list on the Lightning Cup. Huh, things went full circle. This cup is a lot interesting in so many different aspects. For one, this is actually the debut of the Lightning Cup before Mario Kart DS, so it is a bit jarring to see it in a, you know, Mario Kart game that doesn't have retro courses yet. But on top of that, this is the only cup without a Bowser Castle course. Not as the last one, or not even as the penultimate one, there is no Bowser Castle courses in sight. And to be honest, the course selection in the Lightning Cup is the most diverse and interesting set of them all. Say what you will about Luigi's Circuit though, but honestly it is one of the best circuit courses in the entire Marker franchise. Not only is it one of the few courses that constantly rains and doesn't stop on end, but it's also the most difficult circuit track. Yes, I said it, the most difficult. Due to the way the rain works, the controls are a lot more slippery than usual, but it may work to your advantage and it always feels satisfying making those sharp turns. Not to mention, it's also one of the more aesthetically pleasing looking courses in the entirety of the game. I don't know what it is, but the constant raining setting with the dark gloomy clouds and the Luigi blimp just being in the background, it really just sells it for me. It's one of the better courses in Super Circuit, it's one of the best circuit tracks in that game. However, it gets better from here, the next course being my personal favorite Mario Kart track of all time, Sky Garden. Sky Garden always has this more mystical, heavenly feel that no other cloud course can really top. Not to mention, it has so many more interesting shortcuts in the entire series, so I commend it a lot for it. It also has one of my favorite themes of all time, and I really love hearing it, like every second of it, it's just beautiful, I love it. Sky Garden is definitely my favorite course of all time. And again, it gets better. Cheap Cheap Island is the most underrated Mario Kart track, and I don't really know why. In my opinion, it's a lot better than Shy Guy Beach in so many aspects. For one, the calming, soothing, sunset vibe it gets is really nice, and the 
you know, just being in the beach in a calming setting with the calming music, it, it really sells it a lot. The layout itself is honestly not my favorite part about it. I find some of these sections that these are too long or too strange. But honestly speaking, none of that matters when I just feel so relaxed playing through this course. I would honestly would love to see this being remade into Booster Course Pass. If it isn't, I'm going to be completely sad. But of course, the last cup ends up with a banger. Sunset Wilds. This has always been the most interesting course in all of Super Circuit. Not even just that, one of the most interesting courses in Mario Kart history. For starters, this course has a very unique aesthetic gimmick. For every lap you pass, the sun starts setting down, and once you hit the lap 3, it is entirely night themed. This is such a unique change that no other course shares, and it honestly gives this course a lot more identity because of it. Not only that, but everything about this course is just super unique. There are so many sharp turns that it actually feels nice to go through even with the slippery controls. There's mud sections everywhere that will slow you down, but you'll be rewarded if you hit a dash panel. Hell, there's an entire section that's just nothing but Shy Guy tents that will steal your coins if you ran past them. This course has everything, and it is the most interesting course in all of Mario Kart. This is one of the courses I would love to see in Mario Kart 8's Deluxe Booster Course Pass. And, if, and again, if this doesn't come back, I will be completely saddened. Come to think of it, all four of these courses did come back in some sense. Sky Garden and Luigi Circuit appeared in Mario Kart DS, and Cheap Cheap Island and Sunset Wilds came back in Mario Kart Tour. Wow, the course selection of the Lighted Cup is so good that all of the tracks there are remade. This really says a lot, and I can say with confidence that, honestly, the Lightning Cup is the best cup in the entire game. Fight me. And so ends our cup breaking for Mark Kart Super Circuit. If I want to be honest here, I didn't expect myself to really cover Super Circuit for a good while, especially because there's not much I can really say about the game. But playing the game more and more, I've grown a lot more appreciation for it than I have before. And honestly speaking, it's one of my guilty pleasure games now, so it all works out in the end. But I want to note this, what do you guys think about this entire ranking? Leave your thoughts in the comments below and feel free to add in some suggestions for future video ideas. Since I don't have a community tab for this channel, it's kind of hard for me to really ask for any suggestion ideas. So I figured that every end of the video up until then, we probably have me consisting of asking for ideas unless I already have one in the works. However, with that said, I'd like to remind you all that I won't be consistently putting out Mario Kart videos for the remainder of the channel's lifespan, especially because I have a lot more interest beyond Mario games in general, so be on the lookout for other videos that aren't Mario related. That being said, remember that Stu cares about you and I'll see you next time.